I'd like to welcome you to season two of The Rad Habits. Special thanks and shout outs to everybody who supported season one. I'm really excited because we're kicking off with a friend, mentor, and very special guest who just so happens to be the vice president of Jordan Brand. I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Howard White. Pay close attention, this guy is deep. What a lot of people don't know about you is that you were a point guard and you played for the University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. But you but you built your own basketball goal. Now, to get to play Division One basketball, you have to be you have to be good. I mean, you have to you have to be exceptional to play Division One basketball. You know, probably there were some gifts there. You just don't know. I thought that I was a great football player because I used to go and play when I was little. My brother would take me and play with all the big guys. So I was a little guy, so I know if they hit me, they was gonna hurt me. So I had to out. I had. I had to <laughs> be good to get away from them because I know they was gonna try to take me out. <laughs> but my mom wouldn't let me play football uh, because my brother stayed so hurt, so she didn't want me to get hurt. And I wasn't any good, so I was in the band when I was you know, in, the, in the eighth grade. And at that time, basketball, you know, eighth grade, junior high was, you know, you were in JV, and then ninth grade, you'd be in the, on the varsity, and then you went to high school, you'd be on the JV, and then you were on the varsity. So it was a system that you would be in. And I wasn't in that system because, again, I couldn't, I couldn't play, and that was that. An all-black school, so you know they were good, and I wasn't. So I might play out on at lunch on the playground, but I just couldn't play. And when we moved into the woods after my dad had left, one day these guys came by. They said, hey, they let you play basketball down at the new school. And the new school was down, this was right at the beginning of integration. And that was down in the white section. Now they said that there was a sign down there across the uh, uh, gate. And they said, if you hear when the sun go down, you won't see it come up. Wow. And it was a pretty known factor that you didn't want to be down there after dark. And we went down to the school, and I thought, you know, it'd be some kids in there, and we could just go in there and play basketball. But they weren't. It was three men, three white men. Mm -hmm. And we walked in, and we looked, and we said, well, we better leave. And they said, hey, boys, y'all want to play a game? And the man said, they old people. We can beat them. And so we, yeah, we'll play. It was the coach which I didn't know at the time, but that was the guy that became my coach. Then Gary Kilborn, who was the assistant principal, I mean, who was the assistant coach, and then the principal. And me and Terry and Carlton, and we playing, and it was an amazing game because in the black neighborhoods, when I went to play, you could just, wherever you got the ball, you could just shoot it. Got it under the basket, you could shoot it back under the basket. They invented new rules. You had to take the ball back behind the line, <laughs> you had to clear, which is the way everybody plays. Now it makes sense. It's like, so every time it was no son, you got to take the ball back, but no son, you got to take the ball out, no son. So the whole game was no son, you got to take the ball somewhere. They beat us to death. <laughs> but when I was leaving, I stopped to get some water and this man walked up to me and introduced himself. He said, how you doing, son? My name is Jim Hathaway. I'm the coach here. And that's when he said, have you ever heard of the big old Oscar Robinson? Yeah. Me and the rest of the world. He said, if you listen to everything I tell you, you could be just like the big old. So, the notion that someone can see you and 
believe that something's possible is amazing. I wrote a book, my first book, was because my ninth grade English teacher, Nancy Newstep, said, you're a great writer. I take your books home, I read them to my mom every night. And I was just stupid enough to believe I was a great writer. So when I wanted to do a book, Nancy said I was a great writer. All I had to do was write it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I don't think it's awesome. I just think that there are more to us than we know. And sometimes it takes someone else to help you find what that is. My notion, when people ask me what I, because I, mean, I don't really think I do anything that great. They say, wait, what do you do? Mm, I'm just me. Well, what does that mean? And I, I, I envision Star Wars and Luke Skywalker. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. So you remember Luke, he just a kid, right? It was Obi Kenobi one who then gets them and gets them going and movement the force. Look at what's inside of you. But for him to really get to where he had to save the world, he sent him back up into the caves to find Yoda. And if we remember that movie, Baron, he couldn't even get his, his spaceship out of the murk. Right. When Yoda just did it with ease. So, oftentimes, we don't look for Yoda. We don't look for that person that, that can help us see our greater good. And mm. basically, all he's doing is, or she's doing is, helping you to believe about the inner, inner you. And we all have that capacity. And sometimes all we need is a little encouragement. Who are we? Whether you're spiritual, biblical, whatever it is, the Quran, the, it all says that the kingdom is within it. So your power is inside of you. Most people spend a lifetime looking outside of them for everything. It's, once, they, once they become at ease with the inner psyche, they can do a lot of things. So, once this coach tells you that you could be Oscar Robinson, because a lot of times I have discussions. All, all my friends are basketball fanatics and we, we discuss all the time, you know, Jordan, Brian, James, Barkley, Malone, all, all the greats, and we, we discuss them. And sometimes when we talk about MJ, <clears throat> the question will come up because someone said to me, tell me what's, what makes Jordan greater than Kobe Bryant. And my argument one time, well, he makes his teammates better. None of his teammates did accomplish what, you know, Steve Kerr won some rings, but none of them did what they did when they were with the Bulls. So my question was, do you think that what he has is innate or it was the, do you think that it was the diligence and the work ethic? Because here it is, you, you said you weren't even allowed to play basketball per se. With the, with the other kids. One day you're in the gym playing with the guy who eventually became your coach and some random guy walks up to you and tells you you can be Oscar Robinson. Do you think it was the work ethic that took you to Maryland? Oh, without question. Or do you think a lot of it was an innate belief or an innate something that was internal that, that, that got you there? Was it hard? Was it something intangible, you know, that, that just, were you, were, you, were you born with it? Was that, you know, the, 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 it's the age-old age question that everybody struggled with. 